roll of questions. All right, Coach. Um, it feels like every week we're talking about the next tough test for the Lady Vols. You got another tough one on Sunday. What do you know about Joe? Yeah, I think you, first off, you're right, and that's that's the way it's going to be from here on out. Uh, every game is going to be really difficult. Uh, we know that, um, and I think it's it's great for our league, but uh, you know, just they're, they're no knots off. Um, Georgia, uh, pro, they are very fast offensively. They get the ball up and down the court. They score a lot in transition. They play hard. They run hard. They get a lot of that off of their defense. Um, they turn you over. They pressure. They, um, you know, they've got good athleticism on the perimeter, and they've got some size in the paint. And so, um, you know, running your offense is not always easy uh, when you're playing Georgia. Tori, you have a big up tomorrow. Your mom is just practicing, and if, even if she doesn't practice this week, is she the kind of player you could still play more than a minute if she's ready on Sunday? Honestly, uh, we will have to see how she goes. We're going to try to work her in some things today um, and see how things go for her. Um, you know, I, I think there's a, you know, you see somebody walking around, she's walking around, but when you get back out there on the court, you gotta, you gotta make sure she's feeling good. Um, so we're going to take it easy to try to see what we can get her in. Is today the first day she's practicing? Yeah, she's not stepped on the court with us uh, at all this week. If she doesn't play Sunday, you know, how does that kind of challenge your defense then with this one or two months and the deeper round of paint and the with guard defense? Well, obviously, Tamari does a great job of helping us, um, when guards driving the paint, but I think one of the, the biggest things we would miss is her size on Jen Stady. Um, you know, that's a that's a post player who is really good and can score. And just having Tamari's length to at least help contest on some of those shots would would obviously be very beneficial for us defensively. Um, so we'll, we'll, we would have to really look at, at how we're guarding and, and may have to come up with a few alternatives. Who are some of the players you expect to step into that role to kind of fill that? Well, I think Kean Green is, is the is the player that comes in uh, a lot of times for Tamari. Uh, we lose some size with Kean, but we uh, she has great explosiveness. Uh, she finishes well and, and has great poise and aggressiveness on the court um, in that spot. For such different players, does that <coughs> change how you go in the game plan if you know you don't have Tamari? Uh, would it change how I game plan without Tamari? Yeah, or just with the, the – yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Tamari changes things <laughs> uh, for sure. We would, we would, you know, we'll we'll know on Saturday. We'll have a better feel, I should say, on Saturday of what we're going to be able to have with her on Sunday. Kelly, you've got two players going to the same one to be a coach program. I mean, for you as a coach, how happy does that make you to see your players, you know, going to things like that and potentially following that that career? Yeah, I think it's I think it's really cool. It's it's actually a very difficult program to get in. I've had a lot of very um, uh, deserving student athletes that did not get in that program, and I am elated that we are putting these two. We we get uh, both Kian and Joe in this program. Um, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful thing they're doing. You know, to to help young women um, that that could possibly want to pursue coaching. And um, I think it's good for them and, and where they're at and uh, just a great opportunity. You know, uh, one of the things that, that that program does, it, it gives, um, you know, it, it gives you a list. <laughs> so coaches across the country, when they're getting ready to hire some young assistants, a lot of times they call to get this list. It just, it just gives you a leg up. Is Ray back to 100%? I know she's playing quite a bit more, and, and she's played well of late. Is she back to 100%? Yeah, I think Ray is uh, – I think she's physically, you know, uh, about 100%. I think um, right now she's feeling pretty good about what she's doing. So, yeah, I would say if she's not there, she's she's awfully close for sure. What does she bring to the floor, especially when you've got her coming off the bench, uh, that, that, that really benefits you guys? Well, I think she's instant offense. You know, she can really put the ball in the hole. She's aggressive. She brings um, she brings great energy. I think that's one of the things that she has done um, from the moment she stepped on this campus. Just play hard. She's playing downhill always, and it's very aggressive. You have to you have to think about her, right? As an opponent, you have to game plan for her and what she does. Um, so what what she brings for us is just coming in with a, a spark, you know, and, and is able to um, you know she can take and make some tough shots. I know people are going to see a problem. <clears throat> Is it almost kind of 
more beneficial at this point to have her coming off the bench than riding that spark? I'll be honest with you, for our team and, and what, what our team needs, it's been really nice to have her coming off the bench. You know, you've got some firepower sitting over there, and, and your opponent's just looking over there waiting for when you're going to pull that trigger. I think it's been really, really good for our team to have her in that position. How do you feel like she's adopted to that role that she really hasn't played in in multiple years coming off the bench? Yeah, well, she her, her first year and then part of her first year with us or sophomore year and part of her junior year, um, she had – no, I guess that's not right. I guess her, her first year, she did. She came off the bench, and I thought it was a perfect role for her in that moment um, because she gave us the sim similar type thing. She came in and gave us a lot of energy and um, uh, aggressiveness, and I, I thought it was really perfect for her. Right now, you know, she's just wanting to help the team, right? She's just wanting to, to come out and do what she can do to help the team in and, and whatever role that is. And, and she is, she's been um, – she's really put the team first, had a great attitude, and, and – um, you know, is willing to do whatever she needs to do. The Lady Bulls are getting a lot of attention with the hot start that you guys have had to the season. How do you all stay focused and kind of block out the noise, whether it's, you know, positive or negative going forward? Yeah, I know for me, uh, usually when there's noise going on, people have to tell me about it. I'm usually oblivious. I'm watching cartoons with kids, I guess. <laughs> um, but I know our team sees that. Uh, our, team, our team pays attention. And I think for them, you know, trying to stay – uh, competitive and hungry, keep a chip on their shoulder, I think is important. I think they understand we haven't arrived. You know, that's the big deal. I mean, we've done, we've been uh, really good up until this point, and no one can take that away from us. But the season is not over today. You know, there is still a lot of, love, a lot of basketball left. I think they understand that. Um, one of the ways that we, you know, can, can help with that is how we approach practice and, you know, how we monitor their progression in practices and, and thus far it's been really good um, one other another thing we do is openly talk about um, things you know we don't try to hide it or pretend it doesn't it's not out there um, but we we talk about what has made us good and we can't we can't relax and kick our feet up on the desk and feel good about what we've done thus far we got to keep fighting <laughs> well, when when COVID hit, um, actually a year before COVID hit, there were some coaching staffs that were starting to go a little bit more casual. When co when COVID hit, um, it really emphasized the casualness of um, the coaching staffs. So a lot of a lot of you know you can look nice in in your team gear and, and such. Um, I thought we lost something a little bit if we, we went all casual, but on the road, not having to pack, you know, <laughs> dress clothes, that was a really nice thing. So we felt like the nice compromise would be to go a little bit more casual on the road, dress up a little bit more at home, um, then we try to get the best of both worlds. Yeah, you know, I think it was a combination of things. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little old school um, with with the with the dress, I guess. Um, I wanted to wanted to maintain that look at home. Um, you know, it's, if if my entire staff had been pulling really hard one way or the other, I probably would have gone with them um, on this one. But uh, I think we I think for us, we found the right compromise.